Hey guys, welcome to a new video, and in today's video, we're going to look at an update to my uh, recently posted uh, mid 2018 midterm Senate midterm Senate election uh, with the current news. As most of you probably know, our government is in a shutdown. Uh, last night, the Senate, um, both sides of the aisle, failed to reach negotiations and failed to reach an agreement on the budget, which prompted a government shutdown. What, where has this taken us? It has taken us to a political civil war where the Senate Republicans are blaming the Senate Democrats and the Senate Democrats are blaming the Senate Republicans, as well as the White House is also blaming the Democrats. Here's what I think. I am going to do this from two different perspectives of my point of how this is working out. Perspective number one is uh, why this is not favoring the Republicans. The Republicans control the White House. The Republicans control the House of Representatives. They control the Senate. They control all of the governorships, which don't really matter, but they still control all the governorships. The The Senate, Repub or the, the Congressional Republicans, Republicans in general, control every single aspect of the functioning U.S. government except for state legislatures. That is saying a lot in this case. Now, for the Democrats, the Democrats have failed to agree to a piece of legislation because it did not include a single part that that addressed 800,000 um, DACA recipients. They could have negotiated this. They could have passed up legislative appropriations. They could have passed a continuing resolution and agreed on that and just worked it out bipartisanly in the future, but they didn't. And that's where the Democrats are wrong. So there's two sides that sort of equally weigh each other out. A, the Republicans control every aspect of the United functioning United States government. B, the Democrats failed to negotiate because of a single issue within, um, within the budget. Um, so where is this going to play most effectively? Well, we obviously know, for starters, that the Democrats are not going to lose their safe states. You know, this is the, in these safe states is where these Democrats are essentially getting their most support from in terms of, yes, this is the Republicans' fault. They control every aspect of the U.S. government. This is absolutely and utterly just false. And the, the Republicans, it's the Republicans' fault in this. Um, that's where... This is where the Democrats are getting their most support. This is where they will be safe. Now, for the Republicans, where are they getting their most support? Where they're saying, yes, this is totally the Democrats' fault. The Democrats should have negotiated something with us. It could have been a partisan agreement, and we could have gotten this over with much sooner without a shutdown. That This is these three states along this corridor right here. That's where the Republicans are getting their most, wow, this is the Democrats' fault. So now we have both heavily weighed sides on the map the rest of them i highly believe are actually um well mitt romney hasn't technically declared but i'm going to give this to the republicans but uh this is where we have our most weighted arguments at democrats are down 10 senate seats 10 senate seats with everything on the map possible for gop to win so what do the Democrats do? The Democrats need to make sure that they are saying they are going on the defensive and the offensive in this saying, look, we try to negotiate bipartisan agreements. A. B. We are uh, the, we are not in control of any aspect of the functioning U.S. government. Those are their two arguments. If they can relay those in a ground in a hotly and a hotly strong. Um, well, I guess just in intensely strong um, ground game here where they can speak to the voter and say, yeah, we didn't have that opportunity to negotiate something like this. That is when they are going to start. Well, that's when people in this area are going to start saying, you're right. Why are the Republicans blaming the Democrats? That's when people in this area are going to start saying, yeah, you know, Democrats had no opportunity to do anything here 
Now, Republicans need to go on the ground and convey their two points. The Democrats didn't come to the negotiating table. And B, their probably biggest argument in this case is that the Democrat, the Democratic Party cares more about 800,000 DACA immigrants than they do the American citizens. Those are going to be the two players for the Republicans. If the Republicans can relay that message in a good ground game, they will almost certainly take back these two seats. They'll do exceptionally well in this area. They will probably do better in this area. Not saying they'd win it, but they'd probably do better. And then you could probably guarantee this entire area to the Republicans at that point. So that's what we're looking at. So now let's look at the states where this sort of weighs with the Democrats. For starters, North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp. She's popular. Um, the, Re- the Republicans probably aren't going to run a strong enough candidate to compete with Heidi Heitkamp there. Uh, next, this Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith. Both probably going to win their seats back. I'm going to do it moderately because of the shutdown and Republicans are doing better at relaying their ground game. Um, and their two big points, like I said, they didn't come to the negotiating table and 800,000 DACA immigrants over citizens better than the Democrats are relaying their two points at this point. Um, at this point in everything, I'm going to go ahead and give Tennessee back to the Republicans. And then I am also going to, uh, well... Um, I'm going to give Tammy Baldwin her seat back. I'm going to give Debbie Stabenow her seat back. Uh, Then I'm going to give Bob Casey his seat back. Uh, At this point, now where the Democrats are five five seats uh, behind the Republicans, um, and the Republicans are probably going to easily win two more of these seats, uh, giving them a majority. Um, so for starters, I think that the, the, the shutdown is going to negatively affect Joe Manchin. I'm still going to lean a seat to him and it's going to negatively affect John Tester, but I'm still going to lean this to him. Now we get to the areas where it sorts, it starts, well, hold on. Actually, I'm going to give, uh, lean this seat to Jackie Rosen. She'll probably be the nominee. I'm going to lean it to her. That's where we start seeing now Republicans will have a massive weight in these states that are left on the map. First, I think that because of this shutdown, John Hawley will be able to, Josh Hawley, sorry, will be able to say, hey, Claire McCaskill was one of those Democrats that didn't come to the negotiating table. Republicans say, you know, you're right. And same with Joe Donnelly. Uh, the party's nominee for the Republicans will say, hey, he was not at the negotiating table with us. There was no bipartisan agreement out of his mouth. Then you see that happen. Now Democrats or Republicans have gained majority with the exception of Mike Pence. Then you sort of, you sort of, cr- the shutdown sort of crushes the dreams for Beto O'Rourke. He looked promising in the beginning, but now Ted Cruz is going to be like, this Democrat is going to be no different Then the Senate Democrats, then you get a moderately, a moderately given Texas. And then Martha McSally, if she wins or any, or any Republican who wins. And if Kirsten Sinema wins, they're going to be like, yeah, Kirsten Sinema. She's a Bernie Sanders. She's an Elizabeth Warren. She's not going to come to the table. It's going to be all about her policies. That's where you start to see Arizona say, yeah, you're right. And that's not going to happen. Ohio, Sherrod Brown. I think that he will be able to keep his seat, but it's going to be hard because he's going to have to convince the voters that, yeah, this was the Republicans, which will be easier in the state of Ohio than it would in the state like Indiana, Missouri, Texas, Arizona, Tennessee, any of those. Montana, North Dakota, West Virginia, you know. Uh, But I think he will keep his seat. It'll be challenging, but I think he'll keep his seat. And then Florida... I think that one would go to the Republicans because they would be like, yeah, Bill Nelson, just like any other Senate Democrat. 
So here's my prediction, 47 to 53 in favor of the Republicans after the shutdown. We'll see who can improve their ground game and see if they do better on it um, in the future and see what happens after the shutdown and during the shutdown. So thank you for watching. Suggest more videos in the comments. Suggest your prediction and see you later.